Welcome to Split Second! If you want to buy the best sleeves or other magic-related accessories, head down to Dragon Shield using the affiliate link below. This week we have two special guests with us, from La Casa del Comandante. If you don't know the channel but do know Spanish, go check it out! From gameplay videos to tournament coverage and much more Commander content, they have it all! Commandante himself and Ignazi, mostly known as Tremnek, who recently won Chaos Tournament 4, came around to play a couple of games with us. Tremnek brought a spicy Kadena Mars deck, Elder is punishing LF Cruz Aerith Storm, Val wanted to retry his Galazet's Approach deck, and Commandante brought his take on Lone's Cryptozoologist, also campaigned by a Kitty. Tremnek is going first and he unfortunately had to mulligan down to 4, as his deck is denying him many lands. He found a Command Tower and Finorn Elves for ramp. Vampiric Tutor can perhaps help him recover from this tough situation, and Prime Elemental, while it's a combo piece, he just wants it to can trip with Kadena for a card draw at the moment. They sent Mox Diamond, Graf Digger's Cage and Crater Hoof Behemoth to the bottom. Elder Mulligan down to 6, keeping a single boss a Mire mostly relying on their careful study to find more mana sources, and worst case scenario eventually fire Windfall to recoup. Guys to wait for removal, especially versus Drenith, which can leave him out of the game for good. Dramatic Reversal lacks some pieces here, and Model Nature can either be Interaction or a Tutor. Bal also mulliganed aggressively to 5, as his deck can do that, considering he just wants when dragons approach in hand, an island, cascade bluffs and tabernacle at Pendrel Vale for lands, with a ponder to try to find outlets and an arcane signet for ramp, he sent an island and stormkill artist to the bottom. Finally, Commandante Mulligan once, not wanting to go lower, with a single city of brass for lands, but a campaign with a new utopia sprawl and landward else for ramp. Quirin Ranger and Script Ranger can both combo as soon as he finds a Shaya, Wall of Roots for some ramp as well as Rhystic Study to keep his hand filled. Before we get into the match, we would like to remind you that next month the CDH Portuguese League will be holding their second anniversary tournament in Lisbon. It is already sold out with 80 people attending. Trapneck, Comandante and some of the split second members will be attending. Check out the league's social media links to be ready for the next major tournament. Now let's get on with it! Tremnek starts the game with his command tower, casting his Firnorn Elves and passing. Elder exclaims at the top deck, he plays a Blustering and Mire and cracks it for a Volcanic Island, and follows it with a freshly drawn Jewel Lotus, which helps him cast his commander, Eros Tormented Prophet. Bal draws and considers his Tabernacle, but since Ignaz is down to 4, he rather wants him in the game. He plays an Island to then cast his Ponder, not like in the top 3, he shuffles before drawing and ends his turn. Commandante draws a Rejuvenating Springs that he plays. He casts his Lenor Elves, also passing. Travnik also found a land, a waterlogged grove, and he just passes with that Vampiric Tutor at hand. Here comes the nightmare at editing. Elder exiles the top two due to Aerith. He starts with his careful study, hoping to eat some rocks and lands, but he just exiles his kitten for good, as he now plays a Misty Rainforest and is forced to pass. Baldross casts a Mox Opal and then plays a Tabernacle at Pendle Vale, asking the table not to be so mad. Commandant taps his elf to pay for the tabernacle trigger, plays a city of brass and casts his commander Lone Cryptozoologist. In the end step, Terminator casts his vampiric tutor, but Paul responds with his sun song, since he could perhaps not be able to counter what he would tutor for. Terminator can taps and pays for both creatures. He casts a Birds of Paradise and then attacks Ball for 2 in the air. He does play Buzajo, not wanting to channel it on the tabernacle, as he is too far behind already, and tabernacle can also slow down Commandant's deck a lot. Eller cracks his Misty to find a tap's team vents and proceeds to his turn. He pays for Eros Trigger and then exiles the top 2. He had quite a breakthrough now, casting it, exiling 8 cards and discarding his 2 in hand. He now casts his Lion's Eye Diamond and cracks it for a triple blue to cast his Time Twister. However, as Ball passes priority, Commandant fires a Mind Break Trap, exiling the Time Twister, which could have just saved the game here. Eller now casts his Gitaxian Probe to look at Commandant's hand as he has more cards in hand over anyone else. He exiles two more cards and everyone laughs as another combo piece just gets exiled for good. He plays the Wooded Foothills and then attacks Ball for two and passes. Ball plays a Cascading Bluffs and uses it to filter mana into Gamble. He searches for a Mana Crypt and from three in hand he discards a Dragon's Approach. Note, this is the first match of this recording and only now players understood what Ball's main plan was. He casts the Crypt into the Arcane Signet and passes Hellbent. Commandant and Taps pays for both his creatures not to be destroyed. He draws a Tropical Island, which he plays. He enchants it with a Utopia Sprawl, entering play and choosing green. He then just passes the turn. Tremnek and Taps and just pays for his darks to survive. He draws and casts a Cryptolith Rites, ending his turn. In the end step, Elder wants to crack his fetch, but notices the deck has no basic mountains, so that will have to stay here hoping someone plays a Yavimaya or an Urbark. He gets to his turn and Taps and pays for Eros Trigger. He exiles the top two and simply casts his Sol Ring, proceeding to combat, attacking Baal and passing the turn. 
Balan taps and loses script roll. He draws and casts his commander Galazath, entering play and creating a treasure before he passes. Commandant Ian taps and pays for his two creatures. He is finally able to cast his Heuristic Study, two turns later than he wanted, due to the Tabernacle's tax. We are back to Tram next turn, he pays for his Birds of Paradise with the Elf and lets it die. He can now cast his commander Cadena's Linking Sorcerer, Heuristic triggers and he can't pay. It resolves, so he now casts a free morph due to her ability, once again triggering Heuristic and unable to pay. The morph enters, triggering Cadena and he draws, ending his turn. Elder once again pays for Erith and exiles the top two cards. He is Elbent, just looking for ways to refill. He casts the Arcane Signet, paying for the Rhystic Trigger. He then attacks Comandante and passes. Balan taps and pays for the Tabby Trigger. He once again loses 3 from the Crypt, and as he draws, the table mentions that Comandante is now the one running away with the advantage. This way, Bal attacks him with Galazath and passes. Comandante taps and pays for both his creatures. He draws, plays a Yavimaya Coast and casts a Lotus Petal. He then casts a Wall of Roots, triggering Lonis and creating a clue. He still casts a Jaspera Sentinel for another clue and passes. Terminate untaps and pays for their creature's triggers. He casts a Deathrite Shaman, paying for the Rhystic trigger. With Wall of Roots out, he can get through it to Commandante, and he wants Bal's Tabernacle to stay, so he attacks no one, passing the turn. Elder taps, pays for Earth, and once again exiles two mana sources. He plays Calling Tarn to hopefully thin down the deck and passes. Bal taps, pays for Galazeth, and for once he wins the crit roll. He draws on place a Fire Islet that he cracks to draw another card. Bal then attacks Commandante with Galazath and Commandante puts another counter on Wall of Roots to help cast a Scrib Ranger, creating another clue and being able to freely block Galazath. Bal passes and we're back to Commandante's turn. He untaps and pays for all his creatures' tabernacle triggers. He draws but just passes without any action. Tremnik untaps and also pays for all his creatures. He casts his second morph, triggering Rhystic and paying for it. It enters and he draws a card. Not finding any land so far, he casts an Elves of Deep Shadow, once again paying for Rhystic and passing. In the end step, Elder cracks his turn for a basic island and gets to his turn. He untaps and pays for Eros Trigger, he exiles the top two and finally found something. He casts the Fateless Looting, triggering and paying for the Rhystic. He exiles the top four and found even more good stuff. He plays the Inventor's Fair. He considers the order of things and casts Birgi first, triggering Rhystic and not paying. He now casts the Lotus Petal, triggering Birgi and Rhystic, and he pays for it, and then uses Birgi's mana to cast Mana Vault, triggering Birgi and Rhystic again, and he cracks the Petal to pay for it. He just passes as his Titan mana now, but in the end step, Commandante puts another counter on Wall of Roots to help crack a clue before Bal gets to his turn. He untaps, pays for Galazas trigger, and once again takes 3 from the Crypt. He plays his Calling Tarn and passes. In the end step still, Commandante cracks another clue, and he has now 6 in hand. He untaps and pays for all his creatures' taxes. He draws, plays a forest and casts a mana crypt, which he uses to crack his last clue. He now casts a chromox, imprinting a veil of summer, hinting at having good stuff in hand. He now casts his Quirion Ranger, entering play and creating another clue, and he just puts a card of calling X equals 5 on the stack. Everyone knows where this is going, so Bal mentions he has nothing. Tremnek fires a Pact of Negation, which does save the table but will be devastating for his next upkeep. Rhystic triggers and Commandante draws, but the table leaves to see another turn. Tremnek untaps and pays for his pact right away. He then lets the elves and birds die and each other creature pays for itself due to Cryptolith rights. He finally found a land, an underground river, but he is forced to pass. Elder untaps and pays for both creatures. He gains one from the fair and exiles the top two. Once again, just lands. Not an easy day for him today. He plays the fiery islet and cracks it right away, finding even more lands and a duck. At least he now has protection. For what you ask? For the Fateless Looting he just flashbacks. Birgi and Rhystic Trigger, and he pays for it, gaining 1 red mana. He finally found some outlets. He casts his Grim Monolith for some more triggers, and he doesn't pay, so Commandante draws, and he gains 1 red mana. He now casts a Submerge, and the social stack opens on what is the best target from Commandante, and Elder decides to target Quirion. Rhystic Triggers, and he doesn't pay, also gaining 1 more red mana. Now, with the monolith, Elder casts his Wheel of Fortune, willingly not paying for Rhystic, but Commandante decides not to draw, so he doesn't discard the Quirion Ranger. Commandante exiles an Elvish Spirit Guide for green mana and the wheel resolves. Everyone draws 7 but Elder, who gets to exile 14 cards from the top. Will he make it? He starts by casting Alchemist Retrieval with its kicker cost, uh, I mean Cleave, right? He targets Rhystic Study and pays for it, gaining 1 red mana through Birgi again. He now puts Gamble on the stack. Remember, he has no cards in hand, so Echo of Vians is written all over that Gamble. 
The table talks about all of Elder's protection and Val asks if someone has a misstep so they could try to hinder his plans, as Elder has just an arcane signet for blue mana. Trimnek did find one, so he casts it. In response to it, Elder casts his Pact of Negation, and in response to Birgit Trigger, Val fires an impulse. He looks at the top 4 and finds something, but now the table discusses if interaction should be used now or later on the eco. Everyone passes on Pact and Misstep, but now Commandant fires his own fierce guardianship on the gamble. Elder is getting tight with his mana, so he casts a frantic search in response. Birgit triggers and Val responds with what he found, a Shadow Vapor. He targets Lonis, so in case Commandant finds a Shia, at least Lonis is summoning Seek. Commandant cracks his City of Brass to copy it and sends it back to Tremlech's script to lead rights. He copies it, sacrificing his Buzeju and targeting Bal's Galazeth. Bal keeps the chain going, copying it and sacrificing his Cascade Bluffs and directing it towards Eroth once and for all. However, Elder takes this opportunity to copy it, sacrificing the useless fetch to return Manavol to his hand, copying it again, sacrificing Venter's Fair to bounce Sol Ring back to his hand. He now gets one red mana, and the search finally resolves, making him actually draw two cards again in this game. He discards a land and a mystical tutor, and Birgi's last trigger resolves, and so does Gamble. Wait, what? Yes, during the Chain of Chain of Vapors, Commandante put Fierce Guardianship into his graveyard, while arranging his board, so once Gamble was the final piece of the stack, players just forgot and allowed it to happen. This won't change the outcome of the game, though, as Elder had Swansong and Foster Storm to defend himself, and he will still end up with that one blue mana available in the end. He searches for an Aetherflux Reservoir, and randomly discards the Aetherflux, which was his last ditch effort. He starts dumping his hand, starting with Sol Ring, gaining one red from Birgi, following it with his Aerith, Tormented Prophet, also gaining one more red mana. He now casts his Springleaf Drum with his last colorless mana, going up on red mana. He now casts the Mana Vault, staying even on mana. He follows it with Ideas Unbound, exiling six cards. He found quite some stuff. He casts the Mana Crypt, getting one more red mana, and follows it with a Wheel of Misfortune. Now, Commandant reacts by bouncing a Forest to hand through Scrib Ranger to untap his Lenore Elves. And with the green mana floating he had, he cracks his last clue. He finds nothing, so everyone passes priority and they all vote. Val votes 6, the least, actually not used to people voting such higher values. Split second members, you gotta up your game. Everyone discards and draws new 7, but Baal. Commandant did have a Shia and was ready to win if it weren't for the Chain of Vapor. Elder exiles 14 due to Aerith and finally found Echo of Viennes. Elder is almost out of cards in the library, and most win cons were exiled, so he's trying to dig for something he might be missing. He casts Sensei's Divining Top, staying even on mana. He activates it right away to draw a card, exiling two more cards. He now casts the Aether Spell Bomb, once again even on mana, but does crack it to exile two more cards from the top. He now casts Seeding Song to go up to seven red mana floating. He recasts Sensei's Top, staying even on mana, and activates it to exile two more cards from the top. He casts the Mox Opal, going positive on red mana, and just double checks that he has 10 cards in total in his library, before casting his Brainstorm. Birg's mana keeps going up, and he now casts Mox Ember, following that by a Rite of Flame, and still casts his Jessica's Will, targeting Commandante, who has more cards in hand. He recasts his Senses Divining Top, and follows it with his Felwar Stone, to hopefully get access to a third blue mana. He now casts the Echo of Eons, since the Reservoir is indeed his last win con available. In response, Bal cracks his Kalintarn for a volcanic island, and they all shuffle up and draw a new 7, while Elder exiles 14 more cards. He does find another wheel, Pact of Negation again, and Echo Vians is still available in his graveyard. Everyone else found no interaction, so with the amount of protection he has, and he's about to exile the rest of his library and find Reservoir, they just scoop it up to play another one. GG. If you like this pod, remember to check the second match of this recording, episode 127. Thank you for joining us for today's match, everyone. The top deck Jewel Lotus changed Elder start a lot, and while Tabernacle at Pendrelvale delayed the whole table, eventually Aerith's card advantage potential found Elder the necessary wheels and draw spells to get through with it. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TJ Rap, Ajimo, Dragon House Cat, V, RJ, Hitted Chill, Pina, Ricardo, Dragon Steak, Katerina, Super Scaldi, Dog, Wyatt, Wicked, Zinan, Nugan Smith, and CJ Wally, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of Commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!